Hello everyone, Palletub here. Welcome back to Borderlands 3. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the next boss that reliably drops a weapon that only they drop, which is going to be the Rampager. The last boss we took a look at dropped world loot. This guy drops a very specific rocket launcher. This is one of the Vault Guardians, so <laughs> spoiler alert ahead. I probably should have said that before I dropped down. I'm using a build that has extremely good elemental damage. Uh, so my entire strategy for this fight is to light the motherfucker on fire and never stop lighting him on fire. As he goes down here on the ground, we got an easy shot into his critical hit area, which is inside of his chest cavity. And as he dies, he is going to be dipping into phase two here. I'm not sure if I actually have to kill these wisps. I, I don't know what, that, what this actually does. Phase two, he's going to be jumping from the rafters from one place to another, and he's going to don the corrosive effect to his body. Also, he looks like a fucking badass yelling like that. Anyway, he's going to hop around a lot. That doesn't really matter to us because all we're trying to do is riddle him up with flame damage, and we can do that from anywhere. Doesn't matter where he goes, the flame damage will follow. After a while, he'll get tuckered out and... We can go right back to trying to shoot him in that chest cavity of his, if we're able to. As third phase starts, he is going to strip himself of the corrosive poison and adopt flame as his element of choice. I have a Hyperion SMG just for the occasion. I just tried doing this boss with only that fire, uh, what was it, Vladoff assault rifle? And man, this last phase took a while. So I like to just throw these grenades to get things started a little early, but the damage starts tickling him as he's jumping away. Then we can apply the electrocuted effect as soon as possible. If you die in the fight like I did, you can either kill these Elder Wraiths, which die pretty easy if you have an electricity weapon, or you could kill the tiny little wisps off to the side. They're pretty easy too. Uh, when he opens his chest like this, he is vulnerable to critical hit damage. And of course, as he's standing still, I can continue to hit him with every single piece of corrosive damage that I have. He dropped a legendary. Is it the right one? Wait, is it the right one? I don't see it. Ah, it was last! This is it. The stuffed randomizer. I already have three. <laughs> they pretty much roll exactly the same. This one is identical. The one I picked up before this was slightly different, but it seems like he has a pretty good drop, ch drop chance of this, similar to uh, Mouthpiece with his weapon. If you would like to farm this, we are at the very end of Promethea. This is the final zone right before the, for, before the vault. The Forgotten Basilico? I don't know how to say that, but that's where he is. If you want to farm him, all you have to do is get to this part of the story, kill him, go in the vault and loot it, and then go turn the quest in. And then every time you return here, this guy is going to be back. So what's so cool about this gun? Well, let's take a look at it. It's actually an interesting one. I'm not fully optimized for it today, but we have a pretty decent elemental build going on to fit the occasion. So the stuffed quadrimizer. It has 1,392 times four damage. That means it shoots four projectiles and each of those projectiles does 1,392 damage. It has an accuracy of 45%, handling of 41%, reload time of 4.3 seconds, a fire rate of 0.46 per second, and a magazine size of six. As you can see on the left-hand side, it is classified as a rocket launcher. It does 950 damage per second with radiation procs. It has a 33% chance of actually procking that status effect. We have a radius of 540 splash damage, which is not bad. But when you see how much space these projectiles actually take up, uh, that splash damage doesn't quite do it justice. It does fire two ammo per shot, uh, so you could fire it three times before you have to reload. And it has a 1.5 weapon zoom. Now, it says irradiated enemies damage enemies around them, which is true. 
But this is all leading you to believe that this is a radiation weapon, and that's what it does, when that could not be further from the case. So the sights on this are kind of balls. If you zoom in, though, the clumping of the projectiles is a little bit tighter. So from the hip, there's our radiation projectiles. So what do you think happens if we do it again? Corrosive projectiles, followed by fire projectiles. It cycles through the three elements every time you shoot. So every time you reload, it's going to be radiation, corrosive, and fire, one by one by one by one. Which is pretty good. It allows you to, uh, it can be pretty good. It allows you to vary up the element that you're using. Sometimes you only need radiation. Sometimes you don't want to use corrosive. But sometimes you're just trying to trigger as many status effects as possible, especially if you're playing as Amara like I am. So the build I kind of have to optimize the damage output of this thing, because because I think it could be pretty good. The build we're rolling with is as follows. We went deep in the red tree, picking up anima, tempest, and wildfire because I want as much elemental damage as possible and I want these things to spread like wildfire. So whenever we have a chance of a, whenever we apply a status effect, there's a 40% chance that that status effect is also going to spread to everything nearby. And we already have a pretty good AOE radius with this gun. So it, it might just kill everything in a pretty wide area. That's what we're going for. We can do this little trick with Dread to avoid at least some of the potential reload. Um, I don't think Ricochet is going to actually come into play anywhere here at all. We do have uh, three points in Catharsis because... This will explode along with the explosions that we're already making that are exploding, as well as life leech and increased elemental damage. Then over in the blue tree, we do have Violet Tapestry, which is going to increase our chance of applying a status effect to a target. We're shooting out these status projectiles. We want the status to stick. Uh, I then went ahead and put three points into personal space. I don't think it's going to be super good with this because I don't plan on being really close to enemies, but I think it should be fine, along with a little bit of health. And for the first time in one of these little weapon guide videos, uh, we did pick up Arms Deal, which is going to increase our splash damage and damage taken reduction. So if we hit ourselves a little bit, it'll be it'll be okay. That's what that means, right? I've killed myself with so many TDR weapons, dude. We also have helping hands for a little bit of damage mitigation as well. So this is clearly a weapon that's designed to take out lots of enemies in a wide area. So where better to go than to a proving ground to actually show this thing off? Proving grounds are like in-game time trials where the better you do, the more loot you get. Uh, the only downside I could see to this gun is the fact that it has rocket launcher ammunition, right? So it may take a little while for that ammunition to actually uh, replenish itself. It's not the most common type. I'm trying to group up as many of these enemies as I can. We are running an augment for our action skill. We are running... What is it called? What is it called? The ties that bind. So what's going to happen is when I pick someone up... It's going to connect them to nearby enemies so they all take this damage. And then when we shoot them, it's going to spread that damage around to the enemies that they were tethered to. Pretty much other, everyone that was tethered there is now dead. But what happens if we just shoot that guy? Will it spread? Eh, it doesn't really look like it. Let's get to a badass. Let's see how that goes. Dude, the siren is so good at this kind of stuff. Every time I shoot someone in the head, it just spreads elements everywhere. I guess the head doesn't even matter. We're doing so much damage that we're almost killing these guys in a single shot, which is a little ridiculous. Here's a thieving jabber getting away with some of our loot. Perfect opportunity to try out the rocket. Whoa! Okay. So one nice thing with this setup is that we do, I don't know why this equipment's on the screen. We do have the dread talent. So our gun damage is increased for a few seconds after killing an enemy that is grasped, but it's also going to instantly reload our rocket launcher as well, which means we don't have to go through that super hefty reload animation, and we could theoretically 
Just keep firing this bad boy as much as we need to fire it. Was that a ricochet? Hold on, it ricochets? Oh, more thieving jabbers. Look, look, look. Lift it. Here's the reload. Look at that. We don't even have to touch the reload button and we have six more shots ready to go with this bad boy. That's pretty cool, man. I like that. I like that. Here's the first badass of the run. We'll just go ahead and lift him up. See how he likes all these projectiles. That wasn't too bad. Unfortunately, we didn't kill him, so we got to reload. The elemental status might take him down, though. Yeah, dude! See, that's an instance where having a dedicated corrosive gun probably would have been better. Just to eat through his armor a little bit. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about the cycling uh, elements. There are some shields out there that could give you ammo back when you take damage, and I'm sure there's other ways of regenerating ammo as well. I know Moe's has a way of restoring ammunition. I just started playing Moe's a little bit. Um, Amara, to my knowledge, doesn't have any easy ways of getting rockets back, which is another limiting factor of this kind of setup. Lots of enemies here. If you take a look at the mini map, it's gonna be up at the top right. You will see that there are a ton. Let's just go ahead and lift this guy up. And if you check the mini map again, that killed the majority of the enemies that were there. We could just buy some time and wait for our grip to be ready again. Where was that armor, dude? Where did he run off to? Oh yeah, look how many people are on the map. Lift the armored guy. Corrosive. <laughs> not bad. It's not bad. It's really not bad. Dude, this build for the siren is so damn fun. Like just trying to get as many enemies grouped up as you can, picking one guy to be the sacrificial lamb, and then every shot I fire into this guy is also ricocheting off into other places. So you'll see status effects hitting people that you didn't even know were in the area. And then when they start to die, they'll explode spreading that status other places as well. Honestly, one of the best area of effect builds in the game. Like I love the red tree, it's so much fun. And this basically has no cooldown. You could just use this grip whenever you feel like it. Not to mention when you're actually using fire damage. <laughs> it's good. It's so good. We got another thief here. Lifted. Look at that. Spreading corrosive and radiation to everyone. We could just chuck a few grenades in here. These guys are going to melt like crazy. Let's throw some fire in too. Why not? It should be ridiculous. This is kind of what I was worried about. I'm getting to the tail end of this uh, proving ground. Oh, we just got some rockets. So let's see how good these are versus the boss. The boss here is pretty tanky. There's some more ammo here. I'm gonna zoom in to lower the spread because I want these to fly as straight as possible. Well, he didn't take much damage, did he? Hey, little buddy, don't move too much. I need to come back. Can he be lifted? I, I doubt it. We do have some damage over time running. Oh, that wasn't bad. All in all, I certainly don't think it's a bad weapon. The main limiting factor for me in my particular build test is just the fact that rocket launcher ammunition is pretty rare but i think you could easily combine this with a shield that regenerates a little bit of ammunition or throw it on another character that has natural ammunition regeneration and have a pretty fucking good time with it all in all one of the better weapons we've tested today i hope you guys enjoyed today's video this was our look at i forgot the name of it the stuffed quatomizer uh, we're going to keep going down the list of bosses to see if they have any dedicated loot drops. And if we do, showcasing those, then we're going to move on to quests. Then we're going to move on to world drops. Oh, yeah. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you again very soon.